Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all here today. It's raining, it's pouring, but we're not snoring. We've come on down, yeah. We're talking about rain, but there is one who reigns over all. And for those of us who are tuning into that this morning, we've realized there's something bigger going on in life. There is one who reigns over everything, and his name is Jesus of Nazareth, son of the Most High God. It's incredible when you move from darkness to light, and your eyes are opened, and you think, whoa, I had no idea that there was so much more to life. So we come to worship God, because we find when we don't worship God, we find ourselves worshiping things that simply mess our lives up. Anybody know that one? You got sucked down some avenues, and you thought, oh, this ain't healthy yet. So we come to refocus. Um, let me open with a prayer and we'll jump into uh, an encouragement from Michael Farkas. Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, O Holy Spirit, we recognize that you are God and there is no other. And so we ask this morning that you would come with a fresh wave of your Holy Spirit and bless us, bless us afresh. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Let's hear from Michael Farkas what he's got to encourage us with this morning. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41 verse 13 When we place our hand in God's hand, we allow him to lead us. It's an act of trust. It's a decision of the will. It's the best decision we can ever make. God knows the beginning from the end and knows exactly what's the best path for us to take. And he's always there for us. Sometimes the road is difficult, but it's through our trials that we are strengthened. At times we're also being prepared for what God has next for us in our life. It may be promotion that requires us to prepare and step up. Regardless of what we're going through, we must keep trusting him and keep our eyes on him and he'll lead us into the best life possible. Thank God today that he's always with us and will never leave us nor forsake us. And with Jesus in our heart, we can live the best life possible. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to stand and sing Praise in Your Heavens together first this morning. Praise in your heavens and all that's above. Praise Him, you have. 
concerning them, which is clear with me. There is no... Let's read this together, yeah. There is salvation, salvation in, in no one else. else. God has given no other name under heaven, heaven by which we must be saved. saved.
Take a seat, everyone. Uh, just to say, our computer that's doing the live stream has, has broken. I think the motherboard's gone or something. So we're recording this a different way today. We'll have to upload it afterwards. So people aren't watching it live as it's happening at the moment, but you will be watching it a few hours later when we re-upload it. But thank you for our prayers on, on technical difficulties. God is the God who can deal with technical stuff too. So we're going to hear from Errol. We've got her on the video today uh, because we can't really get the camera angle over to us. Let's hear uh, her announcements. Hold it. Can you pause that one sec? Good morning and welcome to this live stream service from Ebony. Because we haven't blessed these kids. They're trying to escape. Raise a hand and point it at them. Here we go. In the name of Jesus, the same way as he raised his hands and blessed people, we bless you, that God would lead you into all truth. He would protect you. He would guide you, and his face would shine upon you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Kids trying to escape. Let's hear from Errol after all then. Good morning, and welcome to this live stream service from Ebenezer. And we pray that as we enter God's presence together, that we will be blessed as we know the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Our meetings this week continue as usual. Uh, there is a craft group tomorrow, lunch hour. On Wednesday, there's a, a Bible study from 1 p.m. And on Thursday evening, another Bible study uh, beginning at 6.30. Friday morning sees our toddler group continue. And we pray God's blessing on all of these events. As his church, we worship together and we do life together. God bless you all. Well, thanks, Errol. I'm not sure which Errol to, black, to, to thank. The one on the, the screen or the one over there. We'll just get this back. It's one of those days, but I think it's a day when we'll be blessed. When everything seems to be going wrong, it's a day when God steps in and says, well, trust in me. Trust in me and find some joy in the day in that. So it's the second part of our series, When People Meet Jesus. I'm going to invite Adrian up. He's going to bring us our reading. It'll be on the screen or you can follow along in your outlines. Thanks, Adrian. Today's reading is from Luke 17, uh, verses 11 to 19. Now on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went along, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell with his face to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to turn back and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. Brilliant. Cheers, Adrian. So the second part of our series, When People uh, Meet Jesus. And today we're looking at a story. When people meet Jesus, they find healing 
One of my favourite quotes, one of my favourite quotes ever is from a man called Frederick Douglass. He was a, a social reformer, an abolitionist and a statesman in America in the 19th century. He said this, one of his famous quotes, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And I believe that's so true. It's one of the reasons why I dedicated myself to prison ministry for so long and I'm so keen to get back doing that. But the, the sad reality is that, is that so many people are messed up and broken because they didn't have a good childhood. And they end up carrying their pain, their hurt, their wounds into adulthood. That's the bad news. That's the bad news. The good news is this. The good news is that when people meet Jesus, they find what? Healing, yeah. I, I, I can see you're a little bit down on this today with all the rain and stuff. When people meet Jesus, they find what? Healing. Yeah, it's what our passage tells us. I want to explore that uh, today. In our Bible passage, we find three different types of healing. I know when people use the word healing, they often think it always means physical. I've got a cold or a broken arm or a condition. But we find three types of healing in this passage. We find physical healing, emotional healing, and spiritual healing. And these three types of healing, they apply to the three parts of a human being. I think people get puzzled here maybe now. Now the good news is that Jesus wants to heal all of me, not just one part of me. In fact, you could say it to yourself. Say this with me. Jesus wants to heal all of me. Say it again. Jesus wants to heal all of me. Yeah, exactly. Now you might think to yourself, well, hold it. What's he on about? What is all of me? I thought all of me is just me. Well, actually, look what the Bible says. Read those three yellow words when I get there. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the three parts that make up a human being. Spirit, soul, and body. In fact, you could say it like this. You could say, I am a spirit. I have a soul, and I live in a body. That's essentially it. I am a spirit, that's who I am. I have a soul, my will, my mind, my emotions, and I live in a body. It's all currently housed inside this body. And Jesus wants to heal all of me, my spirit, my soul, and my body. Now here's the punchline. Jesus wants to heal all of me, but I don't get all of it now. Yeah? He wants to heal all of me, but I can't cash in every single bit of that here and now in this life here today. I don't get all of it now. So today I want to give you a biblical, a balanced, and a beautiful explanation of how you can receive healing for your spirit, your soul, and from your body. From the Lord, or for your body, from the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so let's jump in and, and we'll, we'll get through this. Firstly, to receive physical healing. What do I do to receive physical healing? What do we find in this story when people meet Jesus? Well, the answer is this. If I want physical healing, I shout to Jesus for mercy. Look what the story says. It says, they stood at a distance and they what? And shouted, Jesus, Master, have have mercy on us. Luke 17, 12 and 13. Jesus, have mercy on us. It's a group of, of 10 men and all of them have an incurable disease called leprosy. They stand at a distance to Jesus because they were required by law to socially distance and they shout to Jesus, have mercy on us. And Jesus did. Jesus had mercy on them and as we read in the story, all 10 of them were cleansed of their leprosy. That's supernatural physical healing. And it came about by shouting to Jesus for mercy. In fact, there are loads of stories in the Bible where the exact same things happen. In the next chapter, Luke 18 in the Bible, from this reading, a blind man shouts out to Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus restores the man's sight. Supernatural physical healing again. A few months ago, maybe two, two months ago, something like that, a pastor from Resolven down by Neath here in South Wales was supernaturally physically healed of COVID after the doctor saying that he wouldn't survive 
the weekend. Here's a picture of him here. He's the guy on the left in the blue. Uh, his name is Fortunato. He's a Brazilian, he's a, and he's been a Baptist minister in Wales here for over 25 years. And there's a video story on YouTube um, of his testimony, of his supernatural healing. If you type in Fortunato testimony into YouTube, it should come up. It's about eight minutes long. Uh, it's an interview with the South Wales Baptist Association. And essentially what happened is this. Um, he was in hospital with COVID. He was told he wouldn't survive the weekend. He personally refused three times to be put on a ventilator. No, no, no. His church were praying and fasting for him. In other words, shouting out to Jesus for mercy. And an angel turned up in the hospital you know, room and said to him, I come in the name of the Lord God Most High to bring you healing. Got up and sat on his chest, did something for X amount of time. And the long and short of it is that he was supernaturally healed. Uh, there's no record of anybody entering the hospital. There's no record of anybody entering that room. He, he says what he says, uh, and that's the story. A supernatural physical healing after shouting out to Jesus for mercy. But the reality is this, that a story like that is not common. It's not common. It's rare. And in fact, Jesus didn't physically heal everyone that he met. And furthermore, even the people that Jesus healed would have died from some other condition some point in the future. You know what I mean? I mean, these ten lepers we've read about in the story, they're not walking around today, are they? They were healed of leprosy, but at some point in the future, who knows, five, ten years later, whatever, they died of another condition, or old age, or sickness, or whatever it may have been. All of us are getting older day by day. And the promise of the Bible is not that every single sickness that we have will be healed in this life. This is earth. It's not heaven. I don't get continual supernatural physical healing of every illness I ever have every day here on earth. Instead, I get all of it in the future. No one gets it all when we're talking about physical healing. We hear stories about people being healed physically here and someone prayed for this person and they were healed. But no one gets it all, not all the physical healing in this life. But you can get all of it in the future. For those of you who study a bit of theology, the, the flashy word for that is glorification. The Bible tells us this. In the same way our earthly bodies which die and decay are different from the bodies we shall have when we come back to life again. Read it with me. For they will never die. Yeah. The bodies that we have now, he's saying, they're completely different to the bodies that we will have. The bodies that we will have will never get sick. We'll never get tired. And we'll never die. That's the ones we get in the future. But you can't get that body now. It's like Jesus has given you a post-dated check. And you get to cash that in the other side of death. Now that doesn't mean that God doesn't still physically heal people on earth here today. It doesn't mean that. And it doesn't mean there's no point praying for anyone either. In fact, the opposite is true. In fact, for those of you who know me, I will always pray for physically sick people. And I am always heartbroken and devastated if it doesn't happen. And so I will do what the ten lappers did. I will shout to Jesus for mercy. And who knows what he might do? Who knows what he might do? If I want you to tell someone that this morning, tell them, shout to Jesus for mercy. Who knows what he'll do? Tell someone that. Shout to Jesus for mercy. Who knows what he'll do? Shout to Jesus for mercy. Who knows what he'll do? Sometimes we come with sort of ideas in our head of what's going to happen before we do nothing. The Bible says, ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the door shall be opened. You might get, not get everything you're asking for, but who knows what he'll do for you if you cry out to him for mercy. Secondly, to receive emotional healing. How do I receive emotional healing? We find emotional healing in this passage when people meet Jesus. The key is this. I see myself as Jesus sees me. In our story it says, when he, that's Jesus, when Jesus saw them, he said, 
go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went along, they were cleansed. Luke 17, 14. What we're talking about here is emotional healing, healing of the soul. Healing of the soul, emotional healing. Lepers were excluded from society. You think our social distancing's been difficult through COVID. Lepers were completely excluded from society. They weren't allowed to touch anybody, to hug anybody, including their families. They lost their jobs. They weren't allowed to go to the market to buy and sell. They weren't even allowed to live in their own homes. They were forced to live in leper colonies outside of the town. And they were dependent on other people to bring them food, clothes and medicine. Totally excluded from society. Now that is going to, going to cause some severe emotional damage. Would you agree? Exclusion from that point. Your family, your friends, your job, your home, your society. That is going to create some seriously damaged individuals emotionally. But when they meet Jesus, they find emotional healing for their souls. Jesus talks to them. Jesus accepts them. Jesus listens to them. And Jesus helps them. And those things will always bring emotional healing to somebody. They see themselves as Jesus sees them, which is valued, yeah? Everybody wants to know that they matter, don't they? I actually matter, I'm valued. And here's the thing, Jesus loves them as they are and not as they should be. Because none of us are as, are as we should be, none of us. And if you want to bring emotional healing to somebody, if you're someone here today and you know some broken people in your life, if you want to bring healing in their life, emotional healing, then love them as they are right now and not as they should be because none of us are as we should be. We're all a work in progress, aren't we? In fact, turn to someone today and tell them, I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress, Rich. Errol, I'm a work in progress. And she knows, I know. Forgive me. Forgive me, for I have sinned. Yeah. But it's true, aren't we? None of us are perfect. We're all a work in progress. And Jesus tells him, he says, go and show yourselves to the priest. And the priest would declare them clean. And they could re-enter society. The emotional healing, healing of the soul. It begins with seeing yourself how Jesus sees you and not how other people see you. Let me say that again. Emotional healing begins with seeing yourself how Jesus sees you, not how other people see you. We're talking about a sense of self-worth. Now for these ten lepers, their, self, their, their sense of self-worth will be based upon how they've been treated. And how they've been treated isn't very nice, is it? Now we often do the same thing in our lives. Our sense of self-worth is based upon how people treat us. But when you think about it, that's a completely crazy way of calculating your self-worth. Because lots of people, they're going to treat you badly, even if you're nice to them. Anyone know that when you've done some people some favours, but they stabbed you in the back? <laughs> some of them, at least they got the guts to stab you in the front. But yeah, that's not a way. So you've got to get your sense of uh, a value, your sense of self-worth from somewhere else. Another mistake people make, they get their sense of self-worth from their work, the job they do, the money they earn. But self-worth and net worth are not the same thing. Don't confuse your valuables with your value as a person. You can be rich, you can be poor. It's got nothing to do with your self-worth. So where do you get your self-worth from? As I said, you get it from Jesus, how he sees you and he sees you as valuable. I've said what I'm about to say so many times in this church and I never get tired of drilling it into us. Value comes from two things. One, how much is somebody willing to pay for something? Two, who it belongs to. A couple of years ago, I think 2020 in April, something like that, the Beatles' handwritten lyrics for Hey Jude were sold for 731 thousand pounds nearly three quarters of a million pounds for a piece of paper with some lyrics scrawled on them yeah now if I wrote some lyrics down on a piece of paper my missus would probably screw that up and chuck it in the bin be gone before I even got to the chorus 
you know. But it has little value. But if Paul McCartney owned the paper, then the value rockets. And someone was willing to pay nearly three quarters of a million pounds for it. My point is this. Value is based upon, one, how much someone's willing to pay for it, and two, who it belongs to. The Bible says this. Read the yellow with me. You have been bought and paid for by Christ, so you belong to him. Yeah. You've been bought and paid for by Christ, so you belong to him. And look, here's the results. Be free now from all these earthly prides and fears. Don't walk around with a broken heart. Don't get your self-worth from people who are going to put you down and cause you chaos. Get your self-worth from me. It's what Jesus says on the cross, isn't it? You know how much I love you? This is how much I love you, that I'm willing to die for you because you're valuable to me. When I see myself as Jesus sees me, not how other people will label me, I get emotional healing, healing of the soul. And here's the thing. I get a lot of this in the present. Here and now. I might not get all the physical healing that I want. I could do with some better eyesight, law than my dodgy need to be fixed and this and that. I might not get that until I see him face to face. I'll get all that then. I'll get all of it in the future. But I don't get all the physical stuff now. But I get a lot of the, of the emotional healing in the present. The more of God's truth and word I put in, the more emotional healing I'm going to get. For those of you who do a little bit of study of theology, the flashy word for this is sanctification. It's healing of the soul. And I get a lot of this in the present. Thirdly, to receive spiritual healing. Talked about physical healing, healing of the body. Talked about emotional healing, healing of the soul. In order to receive spiritual healing, I submit my life to Jesus Christ. Look what it says in our story. He fell with his face to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Now he was a Samaritan, Luke 17, 16. This is the only one of the ten lepers who returns to Jesus. All ten of them meet Jesus. When people meet Jesus, they find healing. All ten of them meet Jesus. But only one of them comes back, praising God, and he falls to the ground at Jesus' feet. This is how I receive spiritual healing. I submit my life to Jesus, to fall to the ground and worship Jesus, to submit to him. You've got to wave the white flag. I often say this to men, men who are here this morning. It's difficult for men because we don't want to submit to anything. You know, we watch MMA, you know, or um, Ultimate Fighter or boxing. Last thing we want to see someone is tap out. Submit? Are you joking? Never. You know what a Winston Churchill? We will never surrender, never. Fight them on the beaches or whatever. So the concept for us blokes to surrender, we surrender? Are you crazy? I don't surrender, I fight. I don't submit to anybody. Uh, so I try and explain it a different way. I say think of it like this. Rather than thinking in your head of submitting, think of it like changing teams. Rather than changing the team where, where you're the boss of your life, I'm the boss of my life, change team to the Jesus team where Jesus is the boss of your life. It's like moving from Newport County to Real Madrid. That's what I'm talking about, yeah? It's a good deal. You go from pretty bad management, really, and not much future, managing yourself, to a really good deal. Really good deal with some serious management. Submit your life to Jesus. It's recognizing who Jesus is and who I am, that he's God, I'm not, and that Jesus is the one who's responsible to bring light into darkness, to bring life into a dead spirit. Now the irony of the story is it, it's the least expected person who comes back. It says here and he was a Samaritan. Now, now here's the irony. We talked about lepers being excluded. Samaritans were excluded even if they were fighting fit. They were the most hated people in the, in the whole of the Middle East probably. Forget even Israel. They were seen as half-breeds essentially. They weren't allowed to, have, to, to, to vote. Um, their testimony in a court of law didn't count. They were shunned. And on top of that, this guy's a leper on top. The nine were Jews. The one was a Samaritan. So the irony on top of irony. And yet he's the one to come back. The, the least expected person is the one who submits to Jesus. And that's what I've found in my life as a pastor. 
baptizing people. It's usually the people who are least expected in society are the ones who submit their lives to Jesus. And they're usually the ones who've been outcasts too. The ones who've struggled to fit in. And maybe you've lived a life like that. Maybe you've lived a life where it's looked like you have fitted in. Maybe you did well at school. I didn't. Maybe things worked here and there, but deep down you never felt like you fitted in. Maybe on the outside everybody else did. But on the inside you never felt you fitted in. Those are the people I find so often they submit their lives to Jesus. And when I submit my life to him, I find spiritual healing. Now here's the thing. Spiritual healing, this is mine today because of the past. This is the beauty of it. I pray for physical healing for everybody. Lord Jesus, have mercy on them. Tell me what I've got to do. Take away their pain. I'm begging you. What do you need me to do? I'll do anything. What will this cost me? But we don't get all of that in the present, unfortunately. But you do get all of that in the future. Emotional healing, you're a work in progress. And the more truth you put in and the more you walk with Jesus, the more emotional healing you're going to find. As you see yourself as he sees you, as valued, as valuable, willing to give his life for you. But spiritual healing, that's something that you can say, done and dusted. 100% done. 33 and a third with a dot above it, completely healed. Job done. I'm saved. Salvation. Spiritual healing. Completely done. Still getting some emotional healing. I'm looking forward to the glorification of my body. But I've got my salvation today. I've got my spiritual healing. And it's something of the past because of what Jesus has done. Is what the Bible tells us. Christ carried our sins in his body on the cross. <laughs> he did so that we, so that we would stop living for sin and start living for what is right. Read it with me. And we are healed because of his wounds. Read that again. We are healed because of his wounds. Here's the key. To the whole thing. There's a difference between being cured, essentially, and being heal healed. You know, the, the words are sort of interchangeable in English, but there's, there's a difference. In this story, all ten of them, I mean, they're cured, aren't they? They're cured. All ten of them. None of them have leprosy anymore. They're physically healed. But they're all going to die in the future. Ten years later, twenty years later, thirty years later, they'll catch a cold or whatever. All ten of them are cured. But only one of them was healed. All nine had physical healing. All nine, well, sorry, all ten received physical healing. All ten received emotional healing. But only one received spiritual healing, what we call salvation. Jesus said, you know, was no one found to turn back and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, get up and go your way. Read it with me. Your faith has made you well. Yeah. That's healing there. That's healing. Peace with yourself. Peace with your fellow man. But peace with God. And if I could only take one of those, if I could only take one, if someone said to me, you've got a, your body's in a mess, you're an emotional wreck, and you don't know God. If I could only take one of those, I take the spiritual healing. Because I know it all comes from that. It all comes from that. For those of you who are doing your studies on this, it's called salvation. If you want to go in a bit deeper, your faith has sozoed you. It's completely healed you. You're saved. In this story, when people meet Jesus, there are three types of healing. Physical healing, emotional healing, and spiritual healing. But Jesus wants to heal the whole person. He wants to heal all of me. And if I could only have one of those, I'd take the spiritual. Because that's the one that gives me eternal life. And so, my brothers and sisters, may you shout to Jesus for mercy. And ask for physical healing for yourself and for others. May you see yourself how Jesus sees you. Not what other people say. 
and receive emotional healing. But may you submit your life to Jesus and receive salvation today that only comes through Jesus Christ that you may be made well. Because when people meet Jesus, what happens? They find healing. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Jo up and uh, she'll lead us in prayer. Hey everybody, let's join together and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts that you give freely that we, we just need to accept. You know, you're not going to force yourself on us. You won't, you won't ever force uh, us to love you. It is something that you give us free will. It is our choice. And we give thanks for that. And we pray that you help us. You help us to reach out to you. And that you soften hearts and you allow your word and your truth to just grow, to bring more, more people to you for that salvation, for that beautiful life. Not just, you know, you, you want us to have a great life. You want us to know you and to have peace in this time now, which comes directly from you. Not for it to be affected by what happens in this world and how our day is going or our life is going, but that perfect joy and that perfect peace that only comes from knowing you. Help us to be ambassadors and to shine that to those that we're around, that we have contact with, that we can just shine your light, Lord, so that people see you and not ourselves and that they're drawn to you, Heavenly Father and that they're drawn to a deeper relationship with you so that they can have that healing, that complete healing. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks for the breath in our lungs. We give thanks that you know us and you love us and you sent your son to die for us so that we are not separated from you. We give thanks for all of the ways you provide and we give thanks that when it's dark, you are the light. When we are lost, you are the way. And when we don't know which way to go, you are the truth. And we give thanks that you always send somebody. You always send somebody to walk along by, by the side of us, Lord, so that we haven't got to do this on our own. And if you are that person, or if you're the person that's being walked alongside, we pray that you feel that you are held and loved. And know that that is a direct gift from God, your Heavenly Father. We say sorry for the things that we've done in the past. For the things that we might have said or done. We've all done something wrong. We've all hurt somebody. It may not have been intentional, but it's still caused hurt and pain. And just like we need to say sorry to them, Lord, we say sorry to you. And we know that your light will shine through. And that you'll, you'll ease that pain and that hurt, Heavenly Father. And there's no condemnation, condemnation in Christ. There is no, if, if you're feeling bad over it, that's not coming from God. Because God just wants to bring you healing. So hand it over and, and let his light break through into those dark times. We ask for you to work in our family and our friends. We ask for your healing physically, spiritually, Heavenly Father. We, we just, for their souls, for, for them to know you, Lord, we ask for that now. We ask for your wisdom in all the, the hearts and the minds of the leaders that are making decisions. We pray against war, Lord. We pray against hunger. We pray against conflict of any kind. We pray against disease. We pray against hurt. And we pray that you're in every situation. And we hand it all over to you. We ask that you help us to not be broken, that we have no choice, but to do it willingly, to lift it up. You know, the things that we're just carrying that's just too heavy for us, that we just can't do anymore. Don't help us not to wait until we're on the floor and we just can't move. Help us to hand it over while we still have strength. And we know that you will carry it and you will walk with us and you will carry us and you'll be in every situation. And we join together now and we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're going to come together now and, and sing, You Know My Name. Just before we say the grace to one another, let me say if anyone's got some ailments, some sickness today, I'd love to pray for you. I won't stop. Um, I'd love to pray for you. If you're sick, you've got some physical things, lay hands on you and ask for the mercy of, of Jesus. If you've got some emotional healing, some damage, you want someone to talk to or, or just want me to pray over your situation, I'd love to do that too. And if you're not saved, if you haven't made your peace with God yet, 
um, do that today. Speak to me about that. Let's say this grace to one another. It's great to see these kids back coming back in. My heart lifts when I see them. So see if you can catch someone in the eyes when we say this blessing to each other. Ready to go? Let's go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And I got you up in the balcony, Rich, there for that whole thing. Peace, brothers and sisters. You need prayer for something? Raise a hand. Give me a shout. See you next week.